Welcome to the virtual public hearing for the TxDOT Austin District's I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM1431 project. TxDOT is proposing improvements to I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM1431 southbound in Williamson County. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, along with our commitment to protecting public health, TxDOT is conducting this virtual public hearing in conjunction with an optional in-person hearing offered on June 11, 2021 by appointment only to minimize in-person contact. This presentation will cover the same information that the Austin District would have shared at an in-person hearing. However, the comment process will be different and that will be explained shortly. All project information and supplemental materials can be found on the virtual public hearing website. My name is Brad Wheelis, Public Information Officer for the Austin District, and I would like to welcome and thank you for watching this virtual public hearing that will be available through June 26, 2021. We'll be covering the following areas, a project overview, an environmental overview, proposed right-of-way, the proposed timeline and project development, the public comment process. Again, this will be a little different than our in-person public hearings, and I'll explain later. And then we will adjourn. Additionally, since this is a pre-recorded virtual presentation, you will be able to pause, rewind, or fast forward this video at any time. Under a Memorandum of Understanding with FHWA, TxDOT has been authorized to review and approve environmental documents developed under the National Environmental Policy Act, otherwise known as NEPA. The virtual public hearing is being provided to share information and to encourage comments from the public regarding the proposed I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM1431 project. Notices for this hearing were published on TxDOT.gov and appeared in the Williamson County Sun on May 23rd, El Mundo on May 27th, and Community Impact Round Rock on June 5th. The notice was also mailed out to adjacent property owners, stakeholders, and elected public officials. TxDOT also provided social media posts regarding this hearing and distributed media releases to local media outlets. The purpose of this public hearing is to inform the public of project status and project recommendations, describe the project so the public can determine how they may be affected, provide the public the opportunity to provide input, and develop a record of public participation. TxDOT is committed to continuing the efforts to gain public feedback about this project. We understand this virtual public hearing format is a bit different, so let's take a few minutes and explain the comment process. Because of COVID-19, the Austin District is asking the public to provide their input through verbal and or written comments. TxDOT is offering several methods for providing comments. You can submit written comments by emailing the project email address, mailing your comments to the address on your screen, or by submitting comments online as displayed on this slide. All written comments must be received or postmarked by June 26, 2021 to be included in the official public hearing record. In addition to written comments, verbal comments will be accepted. Verbal testimony will be similar to an in-person public hearing. A voicemail system will allow you to record a comment up to three minutes long, similar to the time provided during our standard in-person public hearing practice. The verbal testimony option is available from 9 a.m. Friday, June 11th, 2021 until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday, June 26th, 2021. Please call 512-501-5451 and leave a voicemail with your comment during that time. The responses to all comments submitted during the comment period will be included in the public hearing summary report, which will be posted on my35.org once completed. This virtual public hearing and additional project information such as the project layout and environmental technical reports are posted for viewing and download at the virtual public hearing website. The information presented on this website is the same information being presented in this video. Now let's start talking about the project details. The Southeast Interloop project spans 4.4 miles of I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM1431 southbound. The purpose of the proposed project is to increase safety and improve congestion and traffic operations to meet current design standards. The I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM1431 project is needed to improve traffic flow at the I-35 frontage road intersections of Southeast Interloop and Westinghouse Road and reduce lane merging weaving along the southbound I-35 main lanes and frontage road 
and reconstruct the Westinghouse Road Bridge to improve safety, operations, and meet current design standards. The following improvements are proposed. Remove the Westinghouse Road Bridge and construct a new I-35 bridge over Westinghouse Road. Construct a westbound to southbound continuous flow intersection at Westinghouse Road. Improve the intersection at I-35 and Southeast Interloop. Improve the existing southbound I-35 frontage road from north of Southeast Interloop to RM 1431. Reverse entrance and exit ramps along the southbound I-35 frontage road between Southeast Interloop and RM 1431. And improve bicycle and pedestrian sidewalks and paths. The project proposes to reconstruct I-35 at the Westinghouse Road intersection from a traditional diamond intersection to an innovative intersection called a continuous flow intersection, or CFI. In a CFI, the Westinghouse Road left turn lane would be shifted to the outside edge of the road, allowing through traffic to move through the middle of the intersection simultaneously. A CFI increases the number of vehicles that can make it through the intersection in a single traffic light cycle. The next few slides show typical cross sections at key locations in the proposed project area. These typical sections provide the existing configuration and a preview of what the proposed improvements could look like. You can view the typical sections for the I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM 1431 project, as well as other project information on the virtual public hearing website through June 26, 2021. The top image depicts the existing conditions of I-35 facing south. The bottom image shows the proposed configuration at the same location. The proposed configuration would include an additional through lane on the southbound frontage road, plus an auxiliary lane between ramp exits and entrances. A 10-foot shared use path along the southbound I-35 frontage road is also included in the proposed design. The next set of typical sections are located along Westinghouse Road at I-35 facing east. The top image depicts the existing conditions at this location. The bottom image shows the proposed configuration at the same location. The proposed configuration would include Westinghouse Road traveling under I-35, improved intersection turning movements, and the addition of 8 to 10 foot shared use paths along eastbound and westbound Westinghouse Road. The pictures here show the typical sections located along I-35 at Westinghouse Road facing south. The top image depicts the existing conditions at this location. The bottom image shows the proposed configuration at the same location. The proposed configuration would include I-35 traveling over Westinghouse Road and the addition of auxiliary lanes between ramp entrances and exits. Shown here is a view of the layout along I-35 at the intersection with Southeast Interloop. You can view the entire layout for the I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM1431 project as well as other project information on the virtual public hearing website through June 26, 2021. The proposed southbound I-35 frontage road would consist of three lanes plus an auxiliary lane where applicable. The southbound I-35 frontage road would be realigned and the two-way driveway in front of Interspace Cavern would be removed. The existing southbound I-35 entrance ramp just south of the southeast interloop intersection would be removed. A left turn lane would be added to the northbound I-35 frontage road at Southeast Interloop. Southeast Interloop would consist of two lanes in the eastbound direction and three lanes in the westbound direction. New traffic signals would be installed at the intersection of Southeast Interloop and the I-35 frontage roads in Austin Avenue. The proposed project includes repaving portions of Austin Avenue and the northbound I-35 frontage road just south of the Southeast Interloop intersection. An eastbound to southbound right turn lane is proposed at Southeast Interloop and the southbound I-35 frontage road. This project would also connect Southeast Interloop to the recently completed Southwest Bypass project. Ten-foot shared use paths along the southbound I-35 frontage road, a section of the northbound I-35 frontage road, and the east side of Austin Avenue are included in the proposed design. An 8 to 10 foot shared use path along the south side of Southeast Interloop is also included in the proposed design. Driveways to adjacent properties would be reconstructed. Shown here is a view of the layout along I-35 just south of the intersection with Southeast Interloop. The existing southbound I-35 entrance ramp just south of the Southeast Interloop intersection would be replaced. 
with the proposed southbound I-35 exit ramp to Westinghouse Road at this location. Ten-foot shared use paths along the southbound I-35 frontage road are included in the proposed design. Driveways to adjacent properties would be reconstructed. Shown here is a view of the layout along I-35 just north of the intersection with Westinghouse Road. The existing southbound I-35 exit ramp to Westinghouse Road, shown on the following slide, would be replaced with the proposed southbound I-35 entrance ramp from Southeast Interloop at this location. The proposed project includes repaving the southbound and northbound I-35 main lanes at this location. Ten-foot shared use paths along the southbound I-35 frontage road are included in the proposed design. Shown here is a view of the proposed improvements to the I-35 and Westinghouse Road intersection. Both the southbound and northbound frontage roads would be realigned at the intersection with Westinghouse Road. The proposed interchange would include turnaround lanes from both southbound and northbound frontage roads. The I-35 main lanes are proposed to travel over Westinghouse Road instead of the existing configuration with Westinghouse Road over I-35. A variable median would be installed between the southbound and northbound main lanes from Gateway Drive to Page Whitney Parkway. The proposed Westinghouse Road would include two lanes in each direction with traffic signals at the intersection of I-35 and the northbound and southbound frontage roads. A proposed protected right turn at each approach would allow for direct access onto the frontage roads. The intersection of Westinghouse Road and the northbound I-35 frontage road is proposed to be reconstructed from a traditional intersection to a partial continuous flow intersection, or CFI, with two additional left turn lanes in the westbound to southbound directions. Ten-foot shared use paths along the southbound and northbound I-35 frontage roads are included in the proposed design. 8 to 10 foot shared use paths on both sides of Westinghouse Road from the southbound I-35 frontage road to the intersection with Kelly Drive Hewlett Loop are included in the proposed design. Driveways to adjacent properties would be reconstructed. You can watch a video that demonstrates the traffic movements through the proposed CFI intersection as well as other project information on the virtual public hearing website through June 26, 2021. Shown here is a view of the layout along I-35 just north of the intersection with RM-1431. The existing southbound I-35 exit ramp to the RM-1431 intersection would be replaced with the proposed southbound I-35 entrance ramp from Westinghouse Road at this location. The southbound frontage road would be realigned to accommodate the proposed shared use path. Ten-foot shared use paths along the southbound I-35 frontage road are included in the proposed design driveways to adjacent properties would be reconstructed. Utility adjustments and relocations throughout the corridor are required prior to construction. The adjustments and relocation of any utilities would be managed so that no substantial interruptions occur in utility services. The environmental study conducted for this project complies with the National Environmental Policy Act. Technical reports were prepared to evaluate potential impacts to the human and natural environment. These technical reports will be posted on the public hearing website. Resources and issues being studied during the environmental process include air quality, community impacts, traffic noise, hazardous materials, historic and archaeological resources, land use and parkland, biological resources, threatened and endangered species, and water resources. The draft technical reports are available on the virtual public hearing website. An analysis of water resources identified four stream crossings in the project area, including two crossings of West Fork Smith Branch, an unnamed tributary to Chandler Branch and Chandler Branch. Potential impacts to the West Fork Smith Branch would be addressed under the Nationwide Permit 14 and would not require reporting to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Potential impacts to the unnamed tributary to Chandler Branch would be addressed under the Nationwide Permit 14 and would require a pre-construction notification to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. No impacts are anticipated to Chandler Branch. A study was conducted on the potential impacts to threatened and endangered species. As part of this process, TxDOT consulted with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on this project's effects to the Bone Cave Harvest Man, Coffin Cave Mold Beetle, Georgetown Salamander, and Jollyville Plateau Salamander. TxDOT also coordinated with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department on potential impacts to state-listed species. A study was conducted to determine the project's potential impacts to archaeological sites. 
The proposed right-of-way was recommended for archaeological survey to identify potential archaeological sites. Due to limited right of entry to adjacent properties, this project was conditionally cleared for archaeological resources in order to advance the environmental process and to acquire the proposed right-of-way. A survey will be conducted once the proposed right-of-way is acquired. Let's talk about the right-of-way acquisition process. The proposed project would require the acquisition of approximately six acres of additional right-of-way. The proposed project would not displace any residential or non-residential properties. Once environmental clearance has been obtained and the project has been fully authorized, TxDOT would commence the acquisition process. All right-of-way acquisition would be done in accordance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly referred to as the Uniform Act. Brochures, including three booklets titled The Purchase of Right-of-Way, Relocation Assistance, and The Landowner's Bill of Rights, are available for you on the virtual public hearing website. These documents contain detailed information on the process and requirements for appraisal and negotiations, as well as detailed information to inform you of your rights as a property owner. In all cases, the property owner would be reimbursed for any reasonable incidental expenses necessarily incurred in transferring title to the acquired property to the state. If you have questions, please call the TxDOT Austin District Office at 512-766-766. 3472. We are in the process of holding the public hearing for this project. The public comment period will last from June 11th to June 26th, 2021. The environmental study and schematic design are anticipated to be complete in 2022. Construction is anticipated to begin in 2024. All construction dates are contingent on funding. The estimated construction cost for the I-35 from Southeast Interloop to RM-1431 project is $107 million. Let's recap how you can provide input about this project. The first way you can share your input is to submit written comments by emailing the project email address, mailing your comments to the address on your screen, or by submitting comments online at the public hearing website as displayed on this slide. You can also provide your verbal testimony. The verbal testimony option is available starting at 9 a.m. on Friday, June 11, 2021, and will be available until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday, June 26, 2021. Please call 512-501-5451 and leave a voicemail with your comment during that time. Your comments will be recorded and a response will be included in the public hearing summary report. The voicemail system allows you to record a comment up to three minutes long, similar to the time provided during our standard in-person public hearing practice. Most importantly, be sure to submit your comments no later than June 26, 2021. As noted earlier, the responses to your comments submitted during the comment period will be included in the official public hearing record. Once completed, this report will be posted to my35.org. 